Manga Organizer, PERSA, is actually from the Akron area as well. Oftentimes we do these things up in Cleveland because Lean Dog is very, very generous at letting us use their space. Um, uh, they, let a lot of, they do a lot of different user meetings. So there's a sort of an easy choice, but it also means driving up to Cleveland. And it turned out Saturday there was like a, a um, some sort of a marathon or some other run-walk thing that like got it and it was like bad timing on our part. So yes, the intent is <coughs> the next time we do this in the winter to try and find a place in Akron to do it and start going both between Akron and, and Cleveland. So that is up. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Cool. So, this isn't actually a supper talk, but I'm going to tag on to what Jerry said and say two things. Um, one, oh wow, there's a camera. Um, <laughs> it's okay. First thing is, uh, as Jerry mentioned, my son came to Railsbridge. He's 16, he's homeschooled. Uh, decided he wanted to do something with computer science and also decided he didn't really want to do that directly with me because <laughs> I'm his dad and so that's totally uncool. So this opportunity came up and it was uh, it was perfect for him and he loved it. So, uh, it, you know, it really is open uh, for people of all ages and skill levels. Uh, my son's primary use of computer up to that point was League of Legends. You know, never really attempted to program anything, and he loved it. Um, the other thing I would toss out there is, you know, like Jerry said, we we will need volunteers for that. And any one of you guys who would like to volunteer but is unsure about it, uh, no commitments at this point. But I think it's fair to say that VHT and or the Akron Code Club could host a train the trainers session here. Uh, sometime before the next rails break. So if you're interested in participating, you know you're not that, that newbie, that, that disenfranchised person we're trying to bring into the community, uh, but aren't really sure how much you could help with a Rails app, come on in, we'll get you up to speed because uh, professional developers should be able to blast through that curriculum pretty quickly and, and be ready to help.
That's a variation of size. You can do any size you want with an SVG. Um, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the complexities of pixel density. So uh, 2x, or I'm sure those are probably going to be a whole more variations of uh, uh, pixel density. And then uh, you also, for every icon you add, you have to write a CSS rule. So it grows in the one to one ratio. These are all things that the SVG icon library should help. So this is just an illustration of sprite management. Uh, most people are probably familiar with this. You have um, all your images kind of butted together as close as you can get them. And then uh, using CSS, you can just uh, kind of mask each separate uh, icon out. So the image on the left is what we use in our application for checkboxes. So you've got your blank state, you've got your uh, State that's selected, and then your state on hover, and then there's like a uh, read only kind of grayed out, and then just repeats as you go through the uh, radio buttons. And on the right, these are all symbols that we have in our application right now for uh, approval and uh, profile status icons. And then this is an example from our app for when I was talking about color variation. So there's these four tabs on top, and when the tab is in front, it has a gray uh, variation, and then when it's background is blue. Uh, so like here is an example where uh, for, the, for this notes section there was a larger um, note and it has a, it's, it's like a, a transparent blue color. So that would do another icon I had to kick out again in 1x and 2x and uh, add to a, a whole new um, image sprite. Uh, design variation, like I was talking about with the sprite, you have your check, your unchecked, and your hover state. And there's actually an icon next to it that's a star. And it's either uh, filled or outlined, depending on the state. Uh, pixel density, so if you have a Retina, MacBook, or device, or whatever, anything that has a 2x or higher, um, you can pass in an image sprite that just specifically will give them a cleaner, crisper. Um, image. So as this workflow continues, you just, uh, at least for me, like every time I would add one icon, you have to kick it out. Um, and all these different variations, keep them straight, and then you're also updating the CSS um, as you're moving along and having to tailor that. Also, I forgot to mention, if anyone has a question or anything, uh, pretty free form, just you know, shout out or, or ask a question. CSS rules. So I'm actually using uh, SAS and uh, Bourbon. So this is like that, uh, that note icon that I was talking about. So I've got a class for whenever this note is blue versus when it's gray, or I've got activity blue, activity gray, and then I have other variations further down this page for sizes. And then uh, luckily the, the Bourbon, uh, like uh, I what you call it, the add-on, uh, helps a lot with this stuff because if I want to pass in a retina image, um, I just uh, will throw it the path to that file and it kind of knows to uh, supply the 1x version as well. So that's all based off of a file name. Um, and then here's the steps of how you do this. So first thing you have to do is hopefully you have all your icons SVG format, so if it's an Adobe Illustrator or anything that has uh, made up of lines and uh, shapes, and then you'll put those all in one directory in your project when you're starting out, and then you'll use uh, Front.js. Uh, does anyone use it? Is this OS specific, or is it platform agnostic? Um, you should be able to use that on anything. I've only done on the Mac so far, but I'm pretty sure all these technologies exist for Anyone, has everyone, yeah. Are you going to upload this uh, the presentation somewhere after this um, meetup? Yeah, yeah, I'll probably uh, just put in the comments section of this meetup. Okay. We also have a GitHub page for after code post too. Okay. Yeah, I started to work on a little demo, but I I've got a I've got another one I use instead that's waste bits, but uh, I might be, I might be able to pick something out for it. Is everyone here familiar with uh, GrubJS? Anyone not familiar with it, don't, don't know what it is. So GruntJS is basically this uh, task manager. Uh, so if you have like things that you're, you 
constantly have to do. Maybe you have to move file. Maybe every time, like you put an image in one directory, you have to copy it somewhere else for whatever reason. Um, you can actually write these little scripts that'll handle those little tiny things. So you'll just uh, go into command line. You'll just run grunt, and it'll just move everything for you. So you can also do things with uh, if you're writing, uh, if you're using SAS or less. You can also set a grunt to watch your CSS files, and it'll kick out the SAS or it'll compile it and put out the, uh, the version that you need. So basically, it's a, it's a really handy thing. And somebody, uh, actually Chris Poyer, who's pretty big in the CSS uh, realm, he that's, and that's actually where I got a lot of this from. Is that uh, he had written an article about how to do this, and pretty much just. Uh, took a lot of what he did and I'm just kind of going through that process here. So he actually got someone to build this uh, specific thing because he had a podcast and he said, oh, wouldn't it be great if you could have, uh, you know, 10 SVGs and someone could write something for Grunt that would just, uh, just, um, just script them all together so they're in one big file. And apparently somebody just, you know, because he's Chris Coyer, you know, they, they just did it for him and said, here you go. So. Uh, so SVG store is a uh, contribution somebody made for Grunt just for handling that task. Mm. And uh, later, uh, soon I'll show you what the SVG files actually look like, uh, so it'll make more sense. And then once you install SVG store, there's a couple lines that you have to add for your configuration for Grunt. And then uh, running Grunt will actually do the uh, um, combining of all your SVGs. And you have to, uh, at the top of the document, there's going to be an SVG definitions, which is what you get from uh, running SVG store. And then there's the SVG tag for how you're going to place it within your markup. And then uh, you're going to have to, you don't always have to write CSS, but if you're going to make variations of an icon, um, you'll be writing CSS to style it. So back for images, as I explained, um, they're just made up of lines and points and fills and uh, I'm pretty sure it's described as being like an XML language, so you can actually go in and open up an SVG file. I plan on doing that at some point. I think in one of the examples I have uh, what that file actually looks like, but you're actually painting it um, in the browser. And this is one of the stars that we use in our profile uh, right now, so if you want to save something as a favorite. Uh, Crunch.js, as I said, is basically just an automation tool. Uh, it's mostly used for identification. Uh, Compilation, uh, unit testing, and there's a bunch of crazy stuff out there for it. So for something that you do all the time and maybe you're tired of doing it, Grunt might have something for you. Um, SVG store, as I was saying, this is a contribution just for combining the SVGs. And I have a link to it down here. So if you have this off, you'll have it. And then this is how you configure Chrome. Is that easy enough to see? Yeah. Okay, so basically, um, this is a pretty common convention with Grunt. Um, this opens up, so all your functions within Grunt are going to be within these brackets. And then there's a, you initialize a configuration. And then uh, basically, the only, the only thing you really have to pass into it is you have to call out SVG store, and then you pass your options. So for this example that I used, I'm prefixing every SVG that it puts out uh, with an icon dash prefix. So once it runs, it's going to take all the SVGs from being 10 and put it all into one big file. And inside every file name, it's going to be a prefix with icon. And then the default behavior down here in the file section is it's going to take everything from it's kind of backwards. So you write your destination uh, where you want it to be kicked out at first. And then you tell it where all the SVGs are. So you'll just tell it, uh, go to images slash icon slash SVG. And then anything with the uh, SVG uh, file extension, it'll look for and grab. And then the two lines down here are just run specific things where you load the task and you tell Grunt what the default behavior is if you uh, run Grunt without any uh, definition. So once it's configured, you run Grunt. And this is what it looked like. So, so if you want to run just that task in Grunt, you don't want to run the whole configuration, you'll just do Grunt SVG store. And then the terminal kicks back, tells you that it's running uh, default. And then it tells you that it made you this file. So in my app, assets, images, icons, SVG, 
SVG dash definitions dot SVG files created. So if you have some something in there that shouldn't be in there, or uh, maybe you actually saved a bitmap as an SVG, it should queue uh, up an error for you. Uh, but in this case, it ran. And this is what the um, SVG dash devs dot SVG file looks. So this is what that front file is creating. And uh, so everything is wrapped inside this SVG tag. And then inside of it, there's a symbol tag. So you'll see that there's a symbol tag up here, and then there's a symbol tag down here. So this is actually two separate SVG files uh, added together. And every SVG file has a or every uh, symbol will use this Z-box attribute, and it has uh, four parameters, and that's X, Y, and then uh, it'll be used the default width or height. And then you pass an ID, so uh, whenever I was talking about setting up front, I was talking about the icon prefix. So each one of these and their ID are using that. So, um, and then this pending dash approval is actually the name of the SVG that I had in the folder. And same thing goes down here. Uh, this was a start uh, SVG and it appended it or prefixed with the uh, icon and then it's kind of cool. Like if you if you're not too familiar with SVG, just kind of look at some of this stuff because you actually see how it's being made. So you'll see like there's a fill rule called even odd. I'm not exactly too familiar with SVG because it's just a area of uh, specifics that I just haven't uh, dug too deep in. But uh, there's a fill color here, and it's using a uh, hexadecimal color. And then there's a clip rule, and I think that's because of something about, it's like masking something to make the shape. And then uh, down here is uh, the actual uh, star that we were looking at earlier. And it passes in other information too, like titles. And I'm pretty sure the reason why they do that is uh, if the, if for some reason it can't paint this icon shape, it'll just show you the title so that way it's not uh, completely broken, at least you'll have some context of what was supposed to be there. But, uh, pretty much what they look like. And you can go in there and hand, hand edit these and change things. And, and, you know, unless you're changing like the fill color or something, you probably really know what you're doing if you're messing around with uh, all those things. So, so, so one thing you have to do, this kind of works similar way to like CSS or anything like that is that you have to include this definitions file that was created. Um, it's recommended that you do it at the top. I think because at the time they wrote the document that uh, Chrome for some reason wasn't working if you put it in the footer. So they recommend that you put it at the top, but I've heard that since then you can put it in the bottom. So if you have some kind of uh, loading you know, uh, constraints, you can probably put it there. And then, uh, so they use the, the PHP function include once and a path to it. Um, I actually just got this uh, working today in Ruby. So that was a, a point for me because I really don't do any backend stuff. So um, and I actually had to uh, find a helper uh, that would actually let me spit out the raw contents of the SVG up in the header. Um, so this is what uh, the icon looks like now in your markup. So uh, you've got your SVG tag inside of the use tag, and the use tag has a xlink uh, href. So every time it's looking for an icon, it's going to reference that SVG depth that you have at the top. So it's kind of working in the, in the kind of like the way like how an image player would work. You just have one master file that you're referencing and you're calling everything. And then if you want to write uh, CSS, uh, specifically the style you think is with uh, fills or um, outlines. There's uh, the class, and this is just a convention I was using icon and icon-star, so just to piggyback off of the prefix name that I was using before. And then this uh, SVG view box is uh, using the uh, you know, zero, x, y, and there's a 100 by 100 height and width. And, um, I feel like this is like a little bit wordy compared to like if I'm just writing a span and uh, putting a class on there for icon, icon star, but I think because of the benefits and what more you can do, I think I've kind of made peace with it. It's not the ugliest thing in the world, but it's kind of a gross, I guess, but they 
say it's going to get better. So. So, uh, I could probably just get on my phone real quick. But, uh, so, whenever you're writing CSS for SAS, um, what you're doing is, uh, so there's a couple uh, CSS rules that uh, you probably haven't really used before. So there's like a fill and there's a stroke and you can do the stroke with. So for icon start, uh, if you can remember at the beginning, I had a one star that was solid gold another star that was transparent but it had a uh, gray border. So what browser supports the SVGs now? Um so not, I know across the board uh, for this example specifically you can do uh, I can't remember if it's IE8 doesn't work, but it's supposed to be everything before IE8, and possibly even IE8 doesn't work. But uh, you can always still use, uh, what do you call it, uh, like a PNG backup, but I don't know if you really want to repeat work if the workflow is already taxing. Uh, luckily, you know, for now, at least uh, with the waste bits, we don't, uh, we don't uh, support IE8, so it's kind of a good solution for us, but you know, not everybody will So this is a, an embedded code pen that I did earlier. And code pen, if you're not familiar with it, it's just like a little uh, scratch pad kind of thing. So you can write your, uh, you can try whatever kind of crazy stuff you're thinking of and see it here. So, and this is actually the CSS I'm using to make it. So our icon star is, uh, should be this one. Or no, I can that yeah. So this one here is this one. And it's got the, uh, so the background is the gold. And it looks like I have a slightly, possibly darker gold around, but that's the same. And then uh, I have a stroke width of 10. And then this one has no fill, a uh, gray outline, and a width of 10. And then generally, I just set the icons to all be the same width. And here is the same uh, display block and full block. And this is something where you can take a look at it too. Over here, you can see this is a, on this left hand column here, and you probably can't see back there again. But uh, this is also another variation. If, uh, somebody does, if somebody didn't want to use the um, SVG definitions, this is pretty much what you would have to do, uh, other than just calling the file directly. But because this is hosted on CodePen, and I can't uh, manipulate some of the things on there like I wanted, I basically just uh, created these. SVG files, <coughs> open them up with a text editor, and just put out the contents of them here. So uh, basically what this is, is you've got the classes like I was using before, icon and icon start, the view box like I talked about, and there's uh, some paths that are drawn in here. So this is like way more uh, verbose than the other solution, but uh, it at least got me to be able